the smash. To badminton players, it is the most aggressive and powerful shot that can be played. It is often employed by players to either increase the game's tempo or to seal a deal against their opponent, as a perfectly executed and placed smash is impossible to return. The sequencing and contribution of body segments during the smash is the most crucial and vital factor that gives the shot its success. The difference between my smash and an autonomous or elite smash lies in the fluent execution of the shot by using the proper biomechanical principles. A player's performance can reach its full potential by regular training and guidance. Therefore, to increase the velocity and trajectory of my smash, I have designed a drill which will encourage proper technique through repetition and self-reflection. The drill I have designed is a form of mass practice which focuses on the preparation, tracking, execution and follow through of the smash. It encourages players to maximise the effort of force summation. This in turn will force the player to smash with the ideal technique passively. To achieve summoning momenta, to produce the highest possible force exerted onto the shuttlecock, badminton players first must be stable, start with correct initialization of movement, and then use the summation of forces. Summation of forces is achieved by full use of body segments, optimum stretch and range of motion, sequence of body segments, optimum contribution of body movement, and perfect timing. The smash requires a preparation, execution, and a follow-through. Referring to a mesdros, the body is most stable when the center of weight is over the base of support. It is increasingly stable when the line of gravity intersects with the middle of the base of support. Thus, as you can see, increasing my base of support has provided me with more stability. The momentum generated in the preparation shuttle by the quadriceps, hamstrings, and gastrocnemii allows me to swing from behind the shuttlecock. This generates more of a smashing effect, as the weight of my body is being transferred onto the shuttlecock, not just the force generated from my deltoids and triceps. In the human body, levers are made up of joints, fulcrums, force, muscles, and resistance, body weight or the racket. The levers can be classified into two groups. Long levers are used to increase the force applied, while short levers are used for fast and accelerating movements of a lever is seen during the smash. The humerus and radius slash ulna are acting as a long lever while the wrist is the short. By extending the lever of the elbow as much as possible, full range of motion is achieved, which is important in summation of forces. This pivot point is used not only to synchronize and assist the larger, lower muscle groups with tracking and coordination, but is also used to increase the rotational inertia. Inertia is the reluctancy of a body to change what it is doing. By beginning the sequencing of these movements in the large muscle gr groups of the lower body, the core and trunk are easily able to overcome inertia, allowing greater force reduction. This example of sequencing during summation of forces eventually results in a faster shoulder rotation, which in turn gives the racket a higher velocity of force which is impacted onto the shuttlecock. The angle of a release is another crucial aspect to the success of the smash, as it determines the time the shuttlecock stays in the air and the horizontal distance of which it moves. This ties in closely with height of release. Similarly to angle of release, height of release determines the horizontal distance that the shuttlecock travels. However, an increase in the height of release is a significant advantage in playing a smash, as it decreases the angle the racket makes on contact with the shuttlecock. This creates a steeper angle and makes the smash harder to return. As you can see, the, bag the elite badminton player fully extends the third class lever of the elbow during the medial rotation of the shoulder and the pronation of radio ulnar joints to increase the force the lever is able to generate. The drill itself is quite simple. The coach or assistant begins service with a low serve. I then return the serve with a net shot. The net shot is then cleared to my back court, forcing me to get behind the shuttlecock. This enforces me to use my momentum and summation of forces. I then, standing or jumping, smash the shuttlecock at the highest possible point at an angle of approximately 55 to 60 degrees to steepen the linear pathway of the shot. 
During the preparation, I will be forced to make a decision aiming at the left or right hand side of the court. I will be aiming about half a foot to one foot inside the white line. The main aspect I will be improving is increasing the acceleration of my racket arm. Currently, it accelerates at approximately 11.25 meters a second squared, while autonomous players are able to generate 20.85 meters a second squared of acceleration of their racket arm. The aim of this drill is therefore then to increase my racket arm acceleration to about 16 meters a second squared. To conclude, this drill can be implemented in future badminton lessons to effectively initiate a change in technique. This will lead to a more ideal and biomechanically correct smash by using simple principles of human movement and physics.